Well, so today we're talking about making the healthy choice when we're trying to eat an appropriate diet. And I want to look at the choice between eating healthy, low-fat meal. So we're talking about a salad with chicken versus eating pizza. Um, what would be the best choice? And, you know, we think salad is obviously the healthy, low-calorie food. And chicken, of course, if it's a breast, it's, you know, healthy because of the protein you're getting without all the fat. Clearly, pizza must be the death trap because it's high in fat and salt. Or at least when you look online, that's the information that you find. That <clears throat> the reason pizza isn't healthy is because of the high fat and salt. So you want to be healthy and lose weight, but you keep getting backwards, confusing information about food that causes your weight to rise. And today I'm going to show you how the healthy choice also causes your weight to rise, keeping you fat and uncomfortable. Let's start by looking up. Oh, let's start by looking at the salad and the, the chicken meal because I decided to use, um, so, okay, let me just give you a little bit of background. This, this is um, not the actual meal. I'm using this, obviously, as a placeholder. But the, the meal I wanted to talk about is a chicken breast that was grilled. And then I decided to go with the Olive Garden salad because everyone's, like, that's a common place to go get a salad in the U.S., from what I understand. And the, the Olive Garden sal house salad with the Olive Garden low-fat dressing gives us 13 grams of fat in this meal. Comparing that to the slice of pizza, now, if we go with a pepperoni slice, it's 13 grams of fat. I can guarantee you that when I was eating standard meals, I would never buy a pepperoni slice of pizza. First of all, I don't find pepperoni taste great by itself. So I would have gone with the meat lovers and that gives us 19 grams of fat. Now, I want to just point out that when we're looking at these two fat levels, it's not that different, first of all, 13 versus 19. But it's if we go with the pepperoni pizza, you're at the same fat level as the chicken healthy meal. So at that moment, not really seeing the big difference of why pizza is vilified as the unhealthy meal. Now, let's look at the salt content because perhaps that's where the big problem is happening. So for the salt, we have 760 milligrams in the pepperoni pizza, and we have 858 milligrams in the meat lover's pizza. It's 32% of your daily allowance for the pepperoni pizza. It's eight, I'm sorry, it's 36% of your allowance for the meat lover's pizza. And that's of a 2,000 calorie diet. So it's based on a 2,000 calorie diet. Now, we're going to come back to that piece of information because that's really huge when we're talking about why we are confused about what to eat and why a lot of the times we end up not getting the results that we're looking for. The lean chicken meal has 1,572 milligrams of salt, which is 105% of your daily allowance. So in this particular instance, you're actually well over, like you're, you're over the amount for the day, and yet this is just supper. What about breakfast? What about lunch? And any snacks you might have had during the day? Was there any salt in them? So up to this point, it really isn't clear why pizza is the worst meal. And I'm not trying to say that pizza is a better meal than salad and chicken. Actually, in my opinion, the salad and chicken is the better meal. What I'm trying to figure out is why are we told that it's worse based on fat content and salt content when the typical meal has similar if not more salt in this particular case. Well, when you look at this, you see that pizza 
is America's undisputed favorite junk food. So we classify it as junk. On this list, we also have ice cream, donuts, uh, French toast, fried chicken, hamburgers, waffles, hot dogs. There's a lot of things on here that are classified as junk. And what I notice about all of them is that they're high in fat. So let's look at the protein of the meals because maybe that's where the problem's coming from. The chicken is giving us a nice 39.1 grams of protein. And the pizza, if you go for the meat lovers, which is what I would have gone for, gives 20 grams of protein. The pepperoni gives a measly 13 grams of protein. The problem with both of these protein levels is that I need, in my day, 90 grams of protein. And so either I've got to eat another two or three slices of pizza, which means then my fat content is way, way too high, according to the reason that this is supposed to be bad for me. So I do agree in this instance, the chicken meal is coming out way in a, a far ahead of this meal. Now, the nutrition information problem that I see, that I want you all to think about, is that these informations are based on a 2,000 calorie diet. But the chances are that you are not eating a 2,000 calorie diet. Most women who are trying to lose weight are much below that. So that, and that's not obvious because this is, these numbers are maintenance numbers. But the problem that I have is that even when I'm doing maintenance, that's not the numbers that, right? So this nutrition information is supposed to be telling you and making sure that you are getting the percentage of the things that you need to be able to fuel and feed your day. And so, for example, you know, how much sodium should be in your food, right? You need to make sure that you, you're trying to make sure you don't go over. But in fact, these are the minimums, not the maximum. So first of all, but then second of all, for a lot of the things that they're showing you on the package, because it's a percentage, it's not take. So let me just take a look at myself. I'm a middle-aged lady. Apparently when I looked it up, that's what, that's what my age falls into. Um, don't get me started about how crazy that sounds to me to say out loud, but I'm a middle-aged lady, female, obviously stuck at a desk five out of seven days. So my activity level, if you do the two days that I am active, I'm not active the full 24 or the full 16 hours. So I come into light to moderate, but light, I would say activity level. I'm five, nine and I'm in maintenance. I've been in maintenance for the last, uh, three and a half years. So my maintenance number, when you put it in the calculator, is much lower than the 2,000. It's like 300 and something lower than the 2,000. But when you look at what I eat, my actual maintenance behavior, so the foods that I eat, I'm well over the 2,000 for most of my days. Now, I do go under it sometimes, or I'm at it sometimes, but mostly I'm over. So. I, like what I need for maintenance, if I were trying to use these percentages, I would be under what I need. The actual lady that would fall in line with these numbers is 49 years old. She's 5'10", weighs 165 pounds, and she does light um, exercise per week. So she's she's similar to me, but she's not exactly me. And that's the number she gets. So let's take this to the next level, which is if I'm using this information to feed and fuel myself, or even worse, if I'm a man, because a male would have to be much shorter than her or trying to aim at a weight that's much lower than her to make these numbers work. Or maybe he'd be working out like a crazy, like, you know, like maximum working out, but to make these numbers work since, you know, so a man is, um, encouraged to be, eat 2,500 calories per day, but the calorie information on the packaging is at a 2,000 calorie diet. So even if I'm a guy and I'm trying to figure out 
you know, what's the healthy amounts of these things? My percentages are well below what I need. How do you actually find the maintenance number? And then how do we make these percentages fit in? Well, the answer is you don't need to. What we actually need to do is to eat healthy food. And that brings us back to the big question of this video, which is what makes pizza unhealthy? Because we still haven't really figured that part of the story out. And secondly, why does the healthy choice also help us to be fat? It's the carb count. The pizza is an unhealthy choice because one large slice of pizza gives you 35 grams of carb, which is much more than the salad with the low fat dressing is going to give you. But well, I, I will say that the 13 grams of carbs in that salad is still more than you need. Sorry, guys, I'm not showing my slides. Thank you, Pat, for letting me know that I forgot to show my slides. <laughs> I'm not going to start over. We're just going to continue from here. <laughs> these are what, these are the, the things that happen when you're live. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, so you're not getting the... So, okay, so we continue. I want to take a moment to point out that the chicken meal trades... So let me just do that. I want to take a moment to show that the chicken meal trades fat for carbs. The salad dressing, so that that low fat salad dressing that's in that chicken meal is six grams of carb and six grams of fat. Versus if you would have used a regular salad dressing on that salad, it would have been two grams of carb. So we get four extra grams of carbs. And the question is, why do they do that? Why do they make this bad trade. And so it's a bad trade. Let me just first tell you why it's a bad trade. It's a bad trade because carbohydrates cause insulin to spike. Insulin is called the fat storage hormone because when it's released into the body, it pulls sugar out of the blood and stores it away as fat. So all the foods that are high in sugar cause fat storage. So we have bread here, we have pasta, potatoes. We eat fruit thinking that it's helping us because we're not eating chocolate bars, but fruit is high in sugar. Bananas, mangoes, uh, watermelon, peaches, apples, they're high in sugar. And what they actually end up doing is causing our body to store fat. And because we end up, and there's a, another big issue with, with um, fruit that we often overlook, which is that it has a high content of fructose. We've all heard of high fructose corn syrup. We know that's not good for us. The fruit has also fructose in it, which is doing the same thing in our body, which is causing liver damage. The other thing I have on the screen is rice. These are all high carb foods that aren't helping us in our desire to lose weight. What does help us are foods that are low in carb count, that don't spike insulin, and therefore they allow our body to use the energy that comes in, the energy and building blocks that are coming in from the food that we're actually eating. So rather than storing the food you eat away because there's too much sugar coming in, you end up using that energy to build a healthy body. So you know, things like meats with the fat that comes along with them. We keep being encouraged to eat low glyce um sorry, low fat foods. So low fat meats, the chicken breast instead of the leg and the thigh and the but then we don't get the energy we need. We try to get that energy from carbohydrates, but those carbohydrates cause us to gain weight. So the again why those healthy foods, those healthy meals end up causing us to gain weight is because they take the fat out that our body knows what to do with, that our body is able to use without storing it away as fat on the body and replace it with carbohydrates that our body 
has difficulty using as energy because if it stays in our blood, it's toxic. And therefore, it has to store some of it away. And we end up storing it how? As fat. We have two energy sources. Fat, which is represented here by butter. But we also have sugar. And these two energy sources are not equivalent in the body. Right? I want you to really let yourself use the fat as a fuel source. It's also a great building block because a lot of our body is made of fat. All Every cell of your body is made from fat. Every cell. So our body needs it to build appropriately. If you eat healthy foods, and you're going to know they're healthy, they're low in carb, they're one ingredient foods. That's the other part of the story. One ingredient foods that build your body. Your, your weight will get back to normal because your health will improve. A healthy body regulates its weight. There's a lot of conversation lately about whether or not keto works and can it work for you. I have a video call coming up that I'm talking about this. I'm going to link it here. If when you're watching the video and you see that link, that means it's available. If keto, if you do keto correctly, it works. If you, and, and it only works because, not because it's keto. It works because you're feeding your body appropriately. You're feeding your body what it wants to grow and build and sur and not just survive, but to thrive. Let's take a look at the comments and questions. I'm sure a lot of them are going to be, hey, aren't there supposed to be slides? I'm really sorry. I don't know. Sing it. Hi, how you doing? Pam, hi, how are you doing? I'm, hi I'm glad you guys were able to make it. Hello, Pat. Thank you for saving me and letting me know that my slides were not available. Do we have questions? I'm really curious to know if, um, well, first of all, what was your, did any of you guess the reason that, um, sure, that uh, pizza wasn't healthy? I don't see if we answered that question. But, um, let's see, I have to catch you on the replay, but wanted to tell you that I was carnivore for the whole seven days. Congratulations, Sing It. I know that that's something that you've been working on, trying to reset your body and get back to a healthy place where you weren't fighting yourself uh, when it came to eating snacky food. So I'm glad to see that you did the whole seven days carnivore. I'm looking forward to see how long you um, decide to do it for. For myself, I know that it I, it was a pleasant um, way to manage food. So Pam, you came in late. Pizza can be healthy without the crust. So I have a question, and this is and and this is a, a real like, if I have pizza without the crust, what is that called? So and and this is a real question. Like so, if I put cheese, and the meats that might have been on there and maybe some kind of sauce without a crust, what would we call that dish? I I will say that pizza can also be healthy if you find an alternate crust that's healthier. The problem is that it's really hard to find one. I found one because I use <clears throat> an all meat crust. We need to consider that an all meat crust then we're like raising that fat level. We're raising that protein level to well beyond what that 2,000 calorie number. So you see where the problem comes in? If we try to follow these numbers <clears throat> and try to do this 2,000 calorie as a baseline thing to figure out what we should be eating, often I feel like we will make mistakes. But I, I do like the idea of not having the crust at all, but I'm just not sure how would I make that and what would it look like? That, sh that could be an interesting <laughs> idea for someone to figure out um, ultimately we use a meat crust, Pat and I, uh, I know that there are some cauliflower crusts and some other kind of crusts. A lot of the time when I looked at the carb count, I personally wasn't happy with those carb numbers, but that's me. Other people are going to have a different thresholds and tolerances for how much carb they can get up to before they reach that 20 gram limit. I always encourage people not to try to hit that limit because that also gets us into trouble. So let's see. Um, so Pat has a question. 
maybe talk about our pizza we eat once in a while yes so <laughs> um as i just did i think i've seen upside down pizza ish like cheese on the bottom as the crust oh that's interesting pat i i maybe have i seen that maybe i have i'm not 100 percent sure that, but it does sound interesting the one thing that i will say and this is where so in my imagination if let's say we put the cheese on the bottom and then we put whatever like so the meats and if you do eat veg whatever veg you might put on your pizza and then do we cover that again with cheese that could be really interesting and i feel like that's something to try sounds like a very cool idea i'll Although part of me is thinking, like, is that does that now become some kind of um, quesadilla? It, it's something to try. I might actually try it and get back to you. A pizza casserole, yeah. Like it, it, for me, it sounds, it feels like it would be something like that, some kind of casserole or something at that point. But it still sounds like it would be tasty. Thank you, um, Dwight, for that for that wording because I wasn't sure what wording I wanted to use there. I'm going to encourage you guys to put any questions you might have for me on this topic while I'm rambling here about pizza. Um, as those of you who know me know, pizza is one of my favorite foods and it's been able to continue to be one of my favorite foods because I did find a uh, meat crust. I think, um, we underestimate the, the bonding ability of eggs to help us to make things. Um, luckily my dad is a chef and so I kind of have that knowledge of how helpful eggs can be in, um, helping you to make things stick together that wouldn't normally stick together. Uh, hello, Yobif video. How are you doing? Uh, th glad you were able to make it. We are only 1137 and I'm not seeing any questions. So it, do we have questions, guys? I would love to answer some questions for you. I know today's topic um, wasn't actually that difficult to comprehend, but I'm willing to look at other questions as well. So I'm going to give you another few minutes. And uh, if there aren't any questions, I actually have some work that I could be working on, so I'll probably get to that. Um, I want to. I also want to let you guys know that every week on Monday, I'm going to be here live on this second channel, which is called the Road to Health, the Journey. And the reason I decided to call it the Journey is because. It's been quite a journey for me to get here, to get to the place where I'm feeling really good about like most health things that are happening in my life. I say most because obviously there's always room for improvement. One of the things that I love and why I call this the journey is that it, I want us to remember this isn't about getting to some kind of imaginary goal line. I, I feel like when we go to the gym, and we do the typical low fat diet. There's this goal line that they're asking you to like, you know, what's the weight you want to get to? Or like what what um weight do you want to be able to bench press or what? these 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 metrics and these numbers that we're chasing. And for me, from day 1, I've always tried to encourage you guys to think about this other piece of the puzzle which is what happens when I attain that goal? Like when I reach the weight that I'm trying to get to, when I've bench press the amount that I wanted to be able to bench press. A lot of times what I notice is that people say goal accomplished and they stop doing the thing that they were doing that was helping them to be healthy. There isn't a goal line in this except feeling good all the time. And in order for me to feel good all the time, it would mean that I would have to eat appropriately all the time, which is part of the reason it's so frustrating to me when I see this information about um calories being the, the the reason that we lose weight or this idea that we should take fat out of our foods. It's frustrating to me because I know that it's pointing you in the wrong direction. It's allowing you to look at pieces of information that aren't really what's going to help you to attain the goal of good health, which then allows your body to lose the weight. In fact, if I'm not healthy, because I'm eating things that are unhealthy, what my body's actually focusing on is repairing any damage that was done by that unhealthy food. And what's it trying to repair it with? The other unhealthy food that you keep eating. 
So you want to fix the wall, but you're bringing in recycled drywall from construction jobs where they broke it down and trying to patch together something. It'd be better to get a brand new piece of drywall and fix the wall. And that's what eating healthy is. It's getting a brand new set of healthy f proteins and fats to build the body that you want to take you forward in life. So I really want you guys to think about that because ultimately I, I sit here once a week having these conversations with you because I want you to get it and I want you to make change and I want you to really improve your life. I see there's some questions coming in. Can you summarize what your topic is? I think I just did, Pam, so hopefully that helped. Um, Patrick is saying, the idea that healthy on a regular diet might not be as healthy as it looks. Oh, you're summarizing for Pam. Thank you, Pat. Violet posts wrap-ups on her videos. I do that. Thank you, Pat. So do we have any questions? Okay, so you're you're all welcome for the summary. And it, I feel like maybe the, the group that we have here today understands what I'm talking about. So since there aren't any questions, I'm probably going to let you go. But like I said, I'm back every Monday, 11.15, because I love talking to you guys. And I really want us to be healthy and live that fun life doing the things that we enjoy whether it's outdoors, whether it's indoors, Lynn is asking, how do you make the meat crust? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to make a, a conversation, but it's, it's a simple recipe. I didn't actually think of this idea myself. So I want to give credit. Um, I've seen it on two different places. I saw, I saw it in, um, Keto Connect made a video about it where they use chicken. And I also saw Keto Savage do a video where he used, I think he used beef to make a bun. Both of these two videos gave me the idea to kind of look at that a bit more and see what, if I could make uh, a version for pizza. That was, because the Keto Connect version, the reason I didn't like their their version of this meat crust is that they had more ingredients than necessary that were adding carp unnecessarily. So I did like the meat they started with, but I can tell you that I've tried this with fresh chicken breast. So like cook yourself. And I've also tried it with canned chicken breast, whatever is easier for you. Um, obviously the fresh chicken breast is a healthier option. And what you're doing is you're cutting it up into really small pieces, but it doesn't have to be super extremely small because you're going to end up um, blending it together with, so um, now amounts is going to be interesting here because if you're using, if you're doing it by the can, then it's one can to make like a, I would say a 10 inch pizza, I would say. And what I do is I just put one can of chicken that's drained. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but drained as much as possible with, I I started off using one egg. But I found if you use two eggs, you can get a much more fluffy um, crust. And you're just blending it if you want to do it in a blender, if you want to do it. Actually, I find in the blender, you're going to get a fluffier crust. So that would be the, especially, you especially need to use two eggs in that scenario. But you can also do it with a hand mixer. I mostly do it with a hand mixer just because I don't like cleaning my blender. So I, I rather clean my hand mixer. And then you spread it in a pan. If you need to grease the pan, you like you know your 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 stuff. You can. Um, sometimes I would put bacon on my pizza, so then I would just cook my bacon first, use the same pan to make the pizza crust, and then I could I could put my pizza my bacon back on, and you just make a pizza like you normally would. Like oh sorry, I almost forgot. You need to cook that crust before you make the pizza on it. So it's gonna kind of rise and you it's not a it's not a it's the kind of crust that you need to pre-cook before you can make the pizza i would say and you all know me i i hate cooking so anything that gets me in and out of the kitchen as fast as possible this meal takes me of actual like violet is touching food time i would say 10 minutes to mix everything together to make the crust that goes in the oven 
I usually bake it in the pizza setting of my oven. And I can't remember how long that is. I want to say 15 or 20 minutes, but I'm not exactly sure. But I do bake it in the pizza setting. I, you know, if I, if I knew I was going to tell you this, I would have checked, but I didn't know. So, and then, um, then I take it out and I put my toppings on like normal. Um, except I don't, I don't use a tomato sauce because nitrates. So I use, um, a pesto sauce instead and I just top it like however I want. Pat decides what toppings he wants. I decide what toppings I want. And we, and then we pop it back in the oven and just enough, to, just long enough to, to melt the cheese on top. It's a very, so if we're looking at this idea again of like, it's a high protein high fat, high um, calorie, if we're going to talk about that number, which you know I hate to, but just putting it out there, it's the carb count is low. And that's why I can eat it because the carb count is low, right? And you're going to eat to satiation. The, I, I always tell people, like, don't try to do what I do. Like The amount that I can eat is based on what my body needs to keep me here. You're going to eat to whatever your satiation point is. But I can tell you that probably if I put that in front of you, like my portion of that, you're going to say, wow, that's a lot. So everybody's different. And I don't expect you to do what I do. But I do want you to all consider that we end up under eating and then being frustrated because we're hungry in a short period of time later, rather than let ourselves eat to satiation. And therefore, because we've eaten to satiation, if we've eaten healthy, so that means very low carbs in there, if we've eaten healthy foods like good protein and good fat sources, we can go a very long period of time without eating. One of the things that I noticed when I was doing really carnivore like I was actually doing it and I wasn't eating any veg was that sometimes when it was time to eat my meal I wasn't actually hungry and I would push it off and push it off and so like when you are eating the right foods do we need to eat as much as we think we need to and I, I think the answer to that is no the problem is we're so used to snacking we're so used to eating for fun that we end up eating extra calories if you want to call it that but we eat, end up eating extra carb that's for sure and so when I let carbs into my diet number one I'm actually hungry on that 24-hour schedule number two I end up obviously eating carb and then for having my body need to manage those carbs when I eat meat, and that's really what I'm focused on, I tend to not have to manage, well, my body doesn't have to manage those carbs, but then I don't have to manage this idea that like I'm hungry sooner than later. It really is something for everyone to think about. Look at your day. Look at where you might be eating carb unnecessarily. Are you still snacking sometimes? Are you still allowing maybe more carb on the plate than needs to be on the plate. So that means, are you tracking? These are important things that if we want to be healthy, we actually need to let ourselves. We have to let ourselves understand what we're doing. I don't know, a large, a large flour tortilla, you would have to look and see how much carb is in the flour tortilla. But I want to point out that, you know, what might be considered a large flour tortilla to you might not be what's considered large to me. But my guess is that there's flour in it. So, Pam, what I will also encourage you is, from what I just said, is track it. So, either the packaging is going to have that in label information that you can go into your tracker and put it in, but it's going to tell you how much carb. And by the way, one thing I did notice is that a lot of the times when you see a good carb number, you just have to verify what the serving size is. I've seen certain places where they're giving you a great carb number, but then you learn, look and you see it's for half a slice of something. Like you're gonna, like you're actually gonna eat half a, a tortilla or half a cookie, 
right? And I've seen that where there even a quarter cookie I've actually seen. So the, the, the nutrition information is for a quarter of the cookie. I want you to, I want you to look at the information and then make a decision based on that carb number, keeping in mind that Doctors have repeatedly told us that they believe that our body can manage 20 grams of carbs or less, which is why the keto doctors are now really pushing that we shouldn't be trying to do more than that. You know, there was a time where keto, so a lot of these low carb doctors, and we're calling themselves low carb doctors because they were saying, hey, as long as you're low carb, under 125, everything's going to be good. And as time has progressed, more and more they're realizing that really, no, our body needs. 20 grams or cars or less. Personally, after listening to many lectures from many of these doctors, what I figured out is that our body actually doesn't need carb. Our body makes all the carbs that we need. So we don't need to eat it. And I think that's part of the reason that there's still so much confusion and problems when we try to, to manage our food and manage our weight. And I'm going to go, I'm going to say it again. A healthy body regulates its own weight. You can't force your body to be at a healthy weight if you're eating poor quality food. It's just not going to happen. So ground chicken makes a good crust. Yeah, if, if you buy the chicken already ground, um, you can probably just, add, you're going to add the egg to it. The reason I like to blend it, I'll be um, very, you know, transparent with everyone, is I like, and so first of all, it's pre-cooked and then I'm blending it. And the reason that I do that is because a nice fluffy bread like feeling thing. So it kind of feels like you're eating a pizza crust. I've tried it where I didn't mix it as much. So like I put the egg and the, and the, the chicken and just mix it together with a fork and you feel like you're eating chicken <laughs> with pizza toppings on it. And that difference I think is is what kind of makes it a fun thing to do because once I've blended it together and it's fluffy, so let's look at what's happening. I'm putting an egg and chicken together. I'm blending it. Of course, it's going to introduce air and then I'm baking it, which keeps the air in the the crust so that when you eat it, it actually feels like you're eating something that's, um, it feels like you're eating bread, even though it's not bread. And this weird, I've actually let our kids try it. And my daughter and the other, you know, the boys, they, they said it, it weirdly tastes like you're eating a pizza crust. Now, I know that when, when Keto Savage did it, he did it with beef. Like, I think it was actually ground beef and they made buns to make their hamburgers with. So you, there's lots of different ways that, and lots of different meats, apparently, that you can do this with. I, pr I just kind of like chicken crust. I haven't tried doing it. So for example, what I have not tried is saying, oh, let me make some smaller versions of these like round for hamburgers. I haven't tried that. Um, I kind of enjoy having my hamburgers on a few lettuce leaves. That's actually what we had for supper yesterday, Pat and I. And I like it. So I haven't had the desire to make a bun for that. I feel like for the pizza, well, until today where I got this idea that maybe I put a bunch of cheese down and then do. So that might be something I might give a shot because of that. It's intriguing to me <laughs> to try that. But I feel like for the pizza, I don't see. Um, I like this crust. I, I like it because there's no carb in it. I like it the way that I've decided to make it. If you try the um, Keto Connect version, like I said, there's more things in it. And I just wasn't a, fa a fan of that. And Pam is asking, how about cloud bread? It's supposed to be keto. When, okay, I I like the way you asked that question because I'm going to point something out. When I go to the grocery store, there are lots of products right now that say keto, 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 that are high in carb and therefore not something that I would eat. So there's two parts to what I'm about to say. Writing keto on something doesn't automatically make it keto. And anything can be eaten in keto numbers. Anything. You can have one French fry, and if that's the only French fry you have for the entire day, you're still within your keto numbers. You can 
you can have a quarter, I think, of a slice of bread. You Like, anything can be eaten in keto numbers. The question is, is it satisfying? I I know people who can have one lick of ice cream, and they're that, that's all. I just wanted to taste it, and, and they're actually fine. Actually, they're not craving later. They're not chasing later. They're not, like, they're actually fine. If you're able to do that, that's fine. But the truth of the matter is, for me, what I've noticed is that I, that's not satisfying. If I have four nuts, so four cashews, I want 20. Now, I haven't tried it with anything else. So there, in, in, in terms of like reality for my world, nuts were the only place that there was any type of fun thing happening for me. Everything else I eat is meal, meal, meal. That's like, I just eat meals. That's it. Because I decided to take fun out of eating. Nuts was that last little place. And we saw what happened to me <laughs> with it. Like if I, if I try to eat them, I just get berserk, bonkers. I go, I go out of control because they taste too fun to me. Now, again, not everybody's like that. I had to be honest with myself. That the same way that somehow when I was eating a standard diet, I allowed myself to believe it was okay to eat that much chocolate. I allowed myself to believe it was okay to eat that much ice cream. I allowed myself to believe that it was okay to eat that many cookies. I had to allow myself to see that my personality hasn't actually changed. So if you put nuts in front of me, especially cashews for some reason, I can have the right serving of Brazil nuts. I can have the right serving of walnuts. Cashews taste sweet to me. They get me running. They get me chasing. So they're off the table. I would probably even imagine that I could have the right amount of, of um, like pumpkin seeds because those didn't taste sweet to me. Now, I haven't had them in a long time, but that's my guess. So I want you to... Rather than ask if something is or isn't keto, I want you to look at the carb count, number one. But more importantly, look at how eating that food impacts you. I could tell you, Pam, that there's lots of things that you you might be able to eat that would make me chase or that I might be able to eat that would make you chase. Like when I have my pizza meal, I like it. It's delicious. I typically have it once a week, but actually I didn't have it last week as, as I'm sitting here thinking about it. Why didn't I have it? I don't even know, but I didn't have it last week. So I, I, I like certain things, but, I, but these are the things that I, that I keep in my life. They don't make me chase. So if I choose to eat something else, it's not a big deal. I hope. I hope that answers the question, and I hope that I, I, I'm trying to even think what's cloud bread made of. I've not tried every kind of bread because, well, I just I got to the point where I started to realize that chasing bread recipes wasn't going to help me to stay on track with what I wanted to do for my diet. But as I said, everybody's different. So yeah, Pam is saying that you you make cloud bread, you don't buy it. I I, I absolutely. It's a matter of, uh, first of all, you would have to look and see what's in it. That's my, my biggest thing. How much carb is there? Um, and I also want to just point out, going back to my pizza idea, if if the pizza that I was making was um, so intriguing to me that I actually started to overeat it, even though it's healthy, even though it's very, very low carb, I'm not going to say it's carb free because eggs do have carb count and so does cheese. So, but it's low carb, even though it falls within the numbers for my day, if I was actually eating it over, like if I was actually overeating it, I'd still be in trouble. I, I would still gain weight because overeating causes weight gain because overeating means I'm eating more energy than my body needs. And then my body has to do something with it. So Pam is saying it's three ingredients. I really don't remember. I don't even know if I've tried it or not. I, Patrick is looking like if we might have tried it, but I don't remember. 
Um, I know that there's a lot of things that we, Pat and I got a little bit frustrated with that either tasted like egg or tasted like cream cheese. So it was, it was hard. Like I feel, so when I'm going to eat something, four years is not far enough away from eating standard diet that I don't remember what the food used to taste like. And there's there's only been a few occasions like where I've tried something and not liked it anymore. Strawberry being one of the occasions. I tried a strawberry not very far into my uh, keto journey and I just didn't like it. It wasn't pleasant and I was like, okay, I'm not doing that again. Um, I feel I was sick, so I, I felt ill eating potatoes, so I stopped eating those. Although I don't think I disliked the taste when I ate the potato. I think it was the after impact that made me stop. The same thing with tomatoes. So anything tomato like sauce, so salsa and all like the, anything with tomato. I felt ill after eating them because they're nightshades and therefore just stopped eating them. So I didn't dislike them. Strawberry was the only one that I disliked. But I've heard many um, people who do carnivore um talk about going back to these other foods and act to actually just disliking the taste i'm not there um i still eat some veg because on a very regular basis which i would say at least once a week at sometimes twice a week i will have avocado and maybe the same i might have olives so once or twice a week for each Again, sometimes I go a week without having either of them. It depends on my mood and what I feel like cooking and how much energy I have for cooking because, you know. So all of this to say that when we when we eat for health, sometimes we lose that desire to chase things because we're, we haven't been doing it for so long. And the only thing I'm still chasing, as I said, like the only thing that can get me chasing right now are nuts. Nuts can do it, but other than that, I've been fine. So let's see if there are any more questions. So Pam is giving us the ingredients. So eggs, cream of tartar, and one other thing. So eggs, cream of tartar, and something else. Uh, claims to be high protein alternative. It's made whipping... So it's made whipping egg whites and cream of tartar to create texture out of meringue. Uh, so, so I my my thing here is maybe for someone who really loves sandwiches, I could see where this might pull your attention. As as we're talking about this, the thing that's that's going through my mind right now is I'm curious how the the pizza crust that I'm making would translate into like some kind of bread but only because I feel like what's happening Pam is that you you like sandwiches and you're trying to find a way to keep eating sandwiches I'll be honest, like I'm I'm not the biggest fan of sandwiches. I the reason I wanted bread was to be able to eat hamburgers. And since I figured out that I like hamburgers on on lettuce, we use romaine lettuce because it has some flavor to it. I usually put two leaves on top, two leaves on bottom. Or if it's a big leaf, I'll fold it in half and put top and bottom. Um but yeah, like I figured out that I I like lettuce to eat my burger. So for for you, Pam, I think the question I'm wanting you to think about is like, what is it exactly that I'm trying to accomplish with this bread that I'm trying to make? Because if you don't actually eat sandwiches, which is what I'm seeing you say right now, then what's the goal? Like, why do I need the bread? What is it going to do? Like, is it to just to eat beside my food? Because honestly, that was a habit from our old life that helped us to be fat. I remember going to restaurants and they would give me bread either at the beginning while you're waiting for the food. And then sometimes they give you at the beginning and then they would bring it with the food again. You'd have more bread. And first of all, I think that's a trick of restaurants to give you the cheap thing so that they can give you less meat. Um, but second of all, it's like, it's not helping us, right? Because in the end you're overeating carb. So 
fast forward to now. Okay, I mean, I, I could totally see where if it's cream of tartare with egg whites, we're getting the protein. We're not getting the fat from those egg whites, though. Sorry, from the egg. So why am I throwing my, my fat away, which is my first complaint. But then, like, why wouldn't, if I really, why wouldn't I just eat the egg with my food? Like, I, for me, that would be much more satisfying. And I do that sometimes. Sometimes Pat and I will have um, chicken with eggs or we'll have um, pork chops with eggs or like we we just we'll just cook some eggs on and put them on the side because they're healthy to have and it kind of rounds out our meal it gives us some of those micronutrients because eggs are a powerhouse when it comes to all those micronutrients and stuff but I feel like the thing that I'm trying to get you to think of is that is it just because I want something else on my plate and if that's the case I would eat the egg I'm I'm not sure why I would bother. That's this is me again. I wouldn't spend the time making cloud bread just to put it besides something else that I'm eating. I would rather put an egg there or some avocado there or some olives there. But that's my personal preference. I also do like um, making those little cheese crisps that they talk about um, with cheese. If you want them to be crispy, what I figured out is that, um, you know, like uh, cheddar type cheeses t tend to be more crispy. And if you don't like them super crispy, I find like, you know, the Swiss kinds tend to be less Swiss. Um, yeah, tend to be less, <laughs> less crispy. But there's lots of other, I mean, these these things do take a bit of time to create versus just slicing a piece of cheese and eating it. Which, but much less time than the cloud bread, for example. So these are these are question marks in my own mind. That's why a carnivore would cut this bread. Then you can have add some veggies. That's why a carnivore would cut this bread. Bread cravings. I, I'm I'm a little bit confused. I'm not sure if I really understand what you're saying. But in my mind, if I'm carnivore, so obviously I'm not eating veggies. And so this bread, because it's egg, which is what I'm understanding from you, so it's egg, and even if there is some cheese in it, they're still carnivore friendly. But personally, I'm not sure why at that moment I wouldn't just eat more meat if I'm doing carnivore. So again, lots of, or just eat the egg. So again, lots of questions. I think. Oh, I have an idea. Maybe this has a lot to do with the whole idea of fun with food. So you're having different flavors and that feels fun. Again, something that I don't often chase because I don't, like, that's not a thing for me. Like, I'm sitting down to eat, feed and fuel my body, and then I'm going off to do something else. So I feel like I spend a lot less time thinking about, like, what flavors are going into the food i mean honestly pat uh, can can chime in on this but like it's it's so we funny that when i'm the one cooking it's so simple it's just like what's the meat and are we having salad or are we having um you know olives or avocado and i don't put that much thought into it it's a it's because i don't feel like there's a need to put that much thought into it so Maybe this is where I'm not really understanding like this any anymore because at the beginning I did do it, but I don't I don't see where making the cloud bread if you don't like sandwiches, I'm not sure where I see that's going to help you. If you were eating sandwiches and you like sandwiches and that was the point, then absolutely I would see where it would help you because if it doesn't have carby so any carby ingredients, it's a better choice than having real bread. And sometimes especially at the beginning of our journey, having real bread is still a temptation. Having, you know, fruit is still a temptation. Having cereal is still a temptation. And so this is where, on some level, I understand why people are looking for these replacements, why why people are intrigued by those keto keto cereals, because it seems like a way to protect myself from eating the real thing. The only thing I want to caution us is that over time, if I trade one processed food for another, at some point I need to look at, do I really want to keep processed foods as part of my meal plan going forward? 
So as a transitional item, I totally get it. As a long-term plan, there's a question mark there for me, right? Because it opens the doors for companies to continue to trick me because they're telling us that that's what's on the packaging. I've even seen, and this is scary, but I've even seen companies where they start off with super clean, amazing, great quality ingredients. And then two years later, you look at the ingredients list after you've been using this product and the ingredients list is changed. And now there's all the same words that weren't there before, these chemical words that are there now. So we need to really be careful because the same way that we want our health to grow and to to be improve over, companies want their profits to grow and improve over and over. And sometimes they make choices that are not in line with what they started off saying they were going to do. So something to think about. Okay, I understand. UBF video clarified that he was trying to say that when you go carnivore, you will stop thinking about keto bread. Um, I I stopped thinking about keto replacements earlier than that. So I was still doing just doing keto when I stopped focusing so much on replacements. But I feel like the thing that helped me to stop focusing on replacements was realizing that focusing on those replacements kept me dreaming of those foods I used to eat, which were exactly opposite of the goal I had for myself to be healthy. And so since I wanted to be healthy and since I wanted to, I wanted to eat food that was going to not only like build me, obviously I wanted to make sure my pain didn't come back. I wanted to make sure that I could play with my daughter and then hopefully, you know, grandchildren and, and great grandchildren. Like I wanted to make sure that I didn't get to the end of my life and be in pain because I was already in pain. I mean, I spent 23 through 46 in pain and it was only getting worse. Fast forward four years later and I'm in better shape than I was back then. It's like, it's crazy to think about. It doesn't make a lot of sense, except it makes a lot of sense. When you're eating garbage, you're not going to feel well. When you're eating healthy foods, you will feel better. And so I really do encourage all of you that it's important for you to try to make sure that you're eating for health rather than for fun, rather than for weight loss even. Don't eat for weight loss. Eat for health when your body's healthy your weight will regulate. So that means eating healthy foods and it means eating to satiation. And if we do that, we're going to improve. And it's hard because we don't necessarily always want to track things, but trust me, tracking is what's going to help you to see that you're actually eating what you're supposed to eat. We want to eyeball things. We want to think that we know how much we're putting on our plate. But I can guarantee you that every single day I measure the cream that I put in my coffee. And every day I'm like a gram over or a gram under. It's, it's never perfect. right? And once you put it in, you can't take it out. right? So I'm 0.5 over, I'm 0.1 over, I'm 0.3 over. Trying to get it to be at the number. And the truth is, be, by measuring it, at least I know what I was over. I wasn't 20 over, right? Which is what it was before. Thinking that I'm putting 15 grams in my coffee and I was putting 25 and 35 and all kinds of really, right? Because you think that's, that, that's, that, you, that's not a measurement, right? That's emotion. <laughs> so even when we're trying our best, we're still going to go over sometimes. I'm not going to say like, it's, it's impossible to say I never go over. But am I purposefully leaving the door open where I'm often going over and going over by a lot? This is where tracking comes in. So I'm seeing the time and it's 1215. So I actually have some other things I need to go accomplish. Wow, Chrissy, hi. I haven't seen you in comments in a long time. I weigh in 
I weigh and measure all of my food. I enjoy doing it. Lost five pounds since May 31st. No sugar, no flour. Life is beautiful. Health is well. I absolutely agree. I'm glad that you were able to, to catch part of the life. Look forward to talking to you more. As I was just about to say, I'm, I'm going to jump off right now, but I just, I love talking to you. I love answering questions. I will be back Monday next week, 1115 live on this new channel. Subscribe if you haven't, All right? Keto, uh, sorry, the road to health, the journey. And I will talk to you again next week.